And remember the notes that we're using today are already, I've already shared with you. Share my entire screen. And yeah, so welcome to your first session of your exam prep, even though we have been doing this for the past six sessions. So this will be our seventh session that we are looking at different questions. Okay, so question number one. Which one of the following statement is correct with regards to variables and statistical inference? A, quantitative variables are also referred to as categorical variables. B, Quantitative variables uses labels or names to describe attributes of elements. C, qualitative variables have either an internal or interval or ratio scale of measurement. D, difference is the process of using data from a sample to make estimate and test hypothesis about the characteristics of a population, that is drawing conclusions, a population based on the sample results. E, measuring attributes of an element results in a quantitative discrete variable. Which one of these five statements is correct? E. I, would, I would say D. 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 Are we are we all happy with D? Yeah. Yes. D is correct because statistical inference statistics, we have two of them. We have descriptive statistic and we have statistical inference. Whereas descriptive just describe, summarize the data and into tables and charts, whereas with statistical inference, we draw conclusion or we make inferences. And otherwise, the rest of the other statements are incorrect. Okay. Question two. Considering the following information about type of variables related to autonomous vehicle, which one of the following statements is incorrect? A, type or name of sensor used the car. Huh? Type or name of sensor used the car, e.g., for example, cameras, leader, radar, is a quality. You just need to check the types of variable, the keywords are type. Is type a qualitative nomina? The driving speed in kilometers per hour of an autonomous car is a quantitative continuous variable. The driving speed, is it quantitative continuous? Ask yourself, question, do we measure it or do we count it? The size of a business in the self-driving car market, that is small business, medium business, large business, is qualitative ordinal. Ask yourself in terms of the size, which is described as small, medium, and large. Is it qualitative ordinal? Is there an order or rank to that? D, the level of autonomy of self-driving car from low autonomy, moderate autonomy, and high autonomy is a qualitative ordinal, same. The level, of, which is based on low, moderate, and high, does it have an order or rank? The distance between the car and the front object is a quantitative discrete 
variable. Distance, is it measured or counted? Is incorrect. That is D. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? I think it's D. 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 Okay, I hear D. What else? Anyone? E. e. I hear E. Yeah, and that's D. I'll say I hear D. It's D. D. Because this sense is measured. So. Sorry, I can't hear. Okay. Because now, we're not in order. This one is not yes, in order. We, we, we are looking for an incorrect. You must also bear in mind the following. In your statement, in the question, which one of the following statement is incorrect? Which one is not correct, right? It's incorrect. So those who say D, the level of autonomy from low, moderate, and high, is there an order? Low, moderate, and high. It's like saying small, medium, and high. That is that. Is there an order? Yes, there is. If there is an order, then what is this level of autonomy? What type of a variable it is? It will be A, qualitative, ordinal. If there was no order, then it would be qualitative. So, oh, no. order, you told me that there is an order. So it is ordinal. Therefore, it means this statement is correct. It's not what we are looking for. The same way as with the type of name of sensor, it's qualitative because there is no order in terms of a camera or a radar or a leader. That will be correct. Let's look at E. E says the distance in meters between a car and the front object is a quantitative discrete. Now ask yourself, distance. Can you count distance or do you measure a distance? Measure. You measure the distance. And if you are measuring something, then the type of variable will be? Continuous. A quantitative continuous. continuous. And this one says it is a discrete. So that is incorrect. So the incorrect statement is E. So that's how you will answer the questions, even in the exam. Look at the keyword and then look at what they're saying it is and confirm whether it's true or false. Happiness? Be good. Thank you. Happy. Question three. In 2020, there was an estimated 3,100 autonomous vehicle on the road in the world. The incomplete frequency distribution below shows the application or use of autonomous vehicle around the world. Complete the frequency distribution and choose which one of the following statement is incorrect. So let's first contingency or the frequency distribution. Where there is a question mark is for robot taxi. What is the amount? How do we get there? Actually, just tell me, how will you get the, the question mark, the frequency? You minus everything from the total 3,100. Thank you. Then minus everything from the 3,100 and tell me what is left. 961. And 50? 
961. Okay. Now let's go and answer the question and find out which of this statement is incorrect. The percentage frequency, so we'll have to validate each one as we go along. The percentage frequency of a self-driving bus is 9%. How do we validate that? How do we find the percentage frequency? Divided by the total times 100. Yes, so we take the self-driving total, which is 260, 279. You will divide that by 3,100 and you will multiply the answer by 100% or 100. And that will give you the answer that we are looking for. Is that correct? Yes, it's correct. So this one is correct. How do we find the relative frequency of civil autonomous vehicle? A frequency percentage or a percentage frequency is your relative frequency multiplied by 100. So how do we find the relative frequency of civil autonomous vehicle? So it the, will be um, several divided by the total. So it will be 31 divided by 3,100. Yes. Do you get what is the answer? 0 0.01. 0 0.01, which means B e is the incorrect one. In the exam, you move on to the next question. You forget about the rest of them. Unless if you calculated incorrectly, then it's your own fault. But as soon as you get the answer in the exam, move on to the next one. Anyway, let's go on for this one because it's calculation. I want to make sure that you understand the logic as well. The relative frequency of Thomas vehicle Okay, you will take 868 and divide that by 3,100. And that will give you 0 0,28. If they ask you, what is the frequency of robo taxi autonomous? You just go to the frequency table and get the answer. We did calculate that at 161. So that will be the correct one. The percentage frequency of self-driving, you will do the same as we did with the first one. Self-driving trucks are 527 divided by 3,100 multiply by 100. Easy, there. Eh? Easy, easy as lemon squeezy. Okay, moving on to the data below shows the production cost in thousands of dollars of 10 autonomous vehicle at Tesla in cooperation, calculate the interquartal range for the cost of production and choose the correct answer from the list above. What is the first step that you need to do is to check whether your data is sorted. That's the first step. Look at the information. If it's not sorted, you need to sort your data. Because we're talking about interquartal range, we can write this 
and reach IQR. You will go to the to your uh, your summary notes. You look at interquartile range there, and you will find that it is quartal three minus quartal one. Therefore, it means we need to go find the value for quartal three and quartal one. And to find the value, you say quartal one. It's given by. You will find it on position n plus one divided by four, or you will find it on position twenty-five percent. Let's call it zero point two five. You will use position zero point two five times n plus one. That will give you like quartal one. And for quartal three, you find it on three times n plus one divided by four, or you will find it on quartal three position on 0 0.75 times n. So you find the position. And once you have the position, you apply the rule. If you find it on 0.25, you round down. If you find it on 0.75, you round up. If you find it on 0.5, you take the average of the two values. So what is your quartal one position? So you will say there are 10 of them. So it will be 10 plus one divided by four. And that will be 11 divide 11 divided by 4 is 11 divided by 4 2.75 2.75 2. therefore we go going to estimate that it is on position 3 so you go to one, two, three. That is your question, quartal one. The same thing you can do it with this. It will be 0 0.25 times 11 plus. It will also give you 2.75. Which we can estimate that it is position three. Do the same with quartal three. What is quartal three? Position 33 divided by four. 8.25. 8.25. So it means also 0.25. And we can estimate that it is on position eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you just go and substitute into the values 2286 minus 1263. And what is the answer? 1023, which is option E. Option E. Happiness? Are we good? Or? Yes. Question five. Now consider the production cost of 10 autonomous vehicles at Tesla provided in the table below. Now, 
which one of the following statement about measures of central tendency is incorrect. The first one says the distribution of the cost of production of autonomy is positively skewed. Therefore, it means what they are saying here. The mean is greater than the median. Always remember that when the mean is less than the median, it's negatively skewed or it's skewed to the left. If the mean equals to the median, it is the metrical. If the mean greater than the median, then we say it is positively skewed or is skewed to the right. If it means this one, it means the tail. The tail is to the left, and this one says the tail is to the right. This one is tail is to the left, and symmetric it means they both equal sides distribution. Okay, so that is the first one you need to think if you answer that question. So it means you need to calculate the mean and the median. You need to find which is the most frequent, which is appearing. You need to find the median and then you need to calculate the mode. I'll give you some time. Remember the mean is the sum of all values divided by N. Find the median by using the position and then go find the value. And then the mode is the most appearing or the most frequent. I'll give you five minutes to think about it. You don't have to say your answers. You need to calculate. I'll be back.
Are we winning? Okay, so let's start with the mount. What is the mount? The mount is correct. The mount is the number that appears more than the others, which then the mode is correct. The median? How many are they? There were 10, so it will be 10 plus 1 divided by 2, which is 11 divided by 2, which is on position 5.5. So it's, it's located between two values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Take the average of the two values. What is the answer? 1519.5. Which is? Incorrect. Incorrect. Okay. Bear in mind that one. Did you calculate what the mean is? If you add all of them, divide by how many they are? And B is correct. B correct. The mean is correct. And if I look at the first one, it says if the mean is greater than the median, then it's positively skewed. My mean is greater than my median. So A is also correct. The only statement that is incorrect is the mean. In the exam, um, do it the same way as I've done it right now, right? Calculate things that you are able to get immediately so that then you can get them out of the way and the rest which are left would mean that if you haven't found your incorrect statement as you are doing the calculation, then the incorrect will be one of those that are remaining. But if you have found your incorrect statement, therefore it means the rest of them are correct. You move on. But make sure that you did your calculations correctly as well. So we move on because our incorrect statement is C. On to question six. Question six. Now consider the production of 10 autonomous vehicles from Google, Waymo, or Waymo from the table provided below. Calculate the standard deviation. You have two choices. Then you're running out, um, you're looking at your time. Use the things that you have at your disposal. Your calculator, your template. If you, if you wanna use Excel templates to calculate, use that. Uh, use your calculator, otherwise, if you don't know how to, this is the sample because it's not everything. So we're going to use S is equals to the square root of the sum of your observation minus squared everything divided by N minus one. That is the formula. Otherwise, you must go and use your calculator, put it in state mode, store the values, and do the calculation. So, Excel. If, because this is something that we've never discussed even before as well, but done it in some of the videos previously. Uh, you need your Excel to have, and let me put it on bigger screen. When you go to data, it needs to have this data analysis if you want. 
if you don't have that, it's fine. You can use the functions and I'm going to show you also now. But those who know how to use your calculators, go ahead and use your calculators. At first, I need to store the data. So I'm just going to call this X. Doesn't matter. That will be my heading and I'm just going to put in my data. 689. And I'm going to put it, put it in a column. 757. Nine one three nine three two one oh nine three one oh nine three one two two six one three three eight. One four one five and one four seven four. So I have all my data that is captured there. Then I'll go to my data analysis and I'll go to descriptive statistic. Click OK. And I must input my data. I'm going to use X. And I'm going to say it is my data is in a column because I've used the column. If I have put that in a row, like if it was in row two, I will select the row one. And I will also say there is the label in my first column or my first row because X is my label. And I want to output the data on the same screen. So I'll just click on output range and click in the white area and click on column D, cell D2. And I'm going to just only look at the summary statistic and apply OK. And it would have calculated all the other descriptive statistics, but we're not looking for all of them. You can use it with the with the previous question where they asked you about the mean, the median, and the mode. You can do that with this one. So you can see that the mean, the median, and the mode of, of this data set are the same. But what we are interested in is the standard deviation. And my standard deviation is that one way of answering the question. The other way of answering this, I can press equal and go to the formula. And I go to more functions. And you click on category. I'll go to statistics. And here are all the formulas. And it says, I'm looking for the standard deviation. It will say S. P Q R S P S. And I'm looking for the standard deviation. Uh, you you can also look at different ones. So this one says it's um, for the sample, and also you this one is for the population. You will see the it says entire population, uh, and this is says it is based on the sample. You can either use this one where it says VA, or you can use this one. Sometimes they don't work, but let's try with the S. And I'm just going to include only those values and press OK. And there is your answer. If you don't want to use the one that says ST, so whatever the it said, um, 
you can use that. You can use that or you can use. I'm going to do the same with equal and then go to function again. You can click on more function there or you can use the function on here. So more function. I'm just complicating your life three days before your exam, but these are some of the things you can use to practice. Um, also, I'm going to only select the values I need and press. OK, and you can see that this. That function. They all give you the same. The same answer. Sorry, my bad. Thanks. You can see they're all giving you the same answer as whether you're using the data analysis panel or not. If you are using a cache calculator, I hope you do have that. You need to capture your data. I'm going to start by putting in the calculator to state mode. Mode. Two. And we're looking for one minus var. And we're going to put in the data six, eight, nine. Enter. Seven, five, seven. Enter. Nine, one, three. Enter. And I'm going to show you also on my calculator on the phone based on the link that I shared with you. All right. Um, nine, three, two. Enter and one oh nine three. Enter and one oh nine three. Enter one two two six. Enter to the side and one three three eight. Enter one four one five. Enter and one four seven four. Enter. And once I'm done, I press the AC button. And I'm ready. Shift and you press the stat. And we go to the var, which is button number four. And we are looking for the S. It's the standard, the, is the sample. So we use the SX. And XX is on button number four and you press equal and you will see that we still get the same answer, which is option C. So now let's do this. That is if it will work, if my if I just I need to connect quickly. Just bear with me. I must find the link and connect and, and hope that I will be able to Okay, it's refusing to connect me because it wants me to sign in. Let's see. Because I did share with you the calculator on your phones, but I've never really showed you how to use that and we're struggling to connect just give me a second
if it's refusing, then it's fine. I'll see to, um, tomorrow if I can sort it out and be ready with it tomorrow. I don't know why I can't connect via my phone. Okay, let's just move on because I can't connect. It's refusing. Okay, oh, you know that the answer here is option C. Are we good? Unless if there's someone who really struggling with how to use the, the version on your phone, then we can can do that to, uh, tomorrow after I saw that my team is on my phone. Okay, if there is no comment on that, then we can sort it out later. Okay, let's move on to question seven. Which one of the following statement is incorrect? With regards to experiment and counting rules and assigning probabilities. A, an experiment with three steps and two outcomes possible for each step has nine experimental outcomes. B, the number of permutation of items that can be selected from a group of seven item is 840. C, the number of combination of four items that can be selected from a group of seven is 35. D, in an experiment with five equal likely outcomes, each experimental outcome has a probability of 0 0.2. E, a statistical method of assigning probability is appropriate when experimental outcomes are equally likely. This looks like an assignment question that we have been doing for almost every session that we do in the beginning when we deal with probabilities, we deal with these questions. The first one is multiplication rule. N by N, the D, it's permutation, N, P, R, N, C, R, P, it's X over N, and this is just the definition. Which one of these statements is incorrect? I think it's number E, Lizzie. Number? Nope. Did you calculate A? Did I think you calculate B. B, C, and D? The answer is A, Lizzie. The answer is A? Is what is A? A would be? 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2. A. A will be three steps with six. two outcomes will be three multiplied by two, which is equals to six. And the answer here says it's nine. And number B, we have seven and four. Always remember that the bigger number is your sample size, right? So that will be 7 P, P4. Uh, sorry, Lizzie. Mm -hmm. uh, for option A, wouldn't it be, because it says three steps with two outcomes, so you write step one, step two, step three, and then the outcomes will be two, 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 where you'll multiply two by two by two, which will give you eight. No, it's three steps and three outcomes. And two outcomes for each step. Ah, yes, for each step. Oh, yes, you are right. You are right. So it will be two times two times two times two times times two. Which will give you eight, yeah. 
which is two times two is four, four times two is eight, which still makes it the correct option. Yeah. The co incorrect option. Yes, you are right. And for permutation. That works out to 840. That will 840. be 840. And for combination. 35. It will be 7. C4. Which will be 35. And for the equally outcomes. Experiments. One divided by five, which will give you 0 0.2. It will be one divide by five, which is 0 0.2, which is correct. And that the last one is your definition of what a classic method is. And classic method is almost like defining how you find the uh, probabilities. It's a method of assigning probabilities when all experimental outcomes are equal, like for example, with number D, how we did that. Is correct. Okay. Moving on to question eight. The contingency table below shows the level of automation for autonomous vehicles and their users. Calculate the probability that an autonomous vehicle is used as a civil vehicle or that the level of autonomous is partial automation. Choose the correct option. For well, the fact that they say or oh, there, what are we looking for? We're looking for the probability of civil or partial automation. So I'm going to call this P and I'm going to call this C, which is given by, you need to know the formula. Remember, in terms of basic probabilities, the probability of A or B is given by the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A and, and B, which is the probability of joint probabilities. And if A and B are mutually exclusive, if they are mutually exclusive, then the probability of A or B will be the same as the probability of A plus the probability of B. Now, when do things become mutually exclusive? Mutually exclusive events, the probability of A and B will be equal to zero. Now, if you know all these things, let's look at this question. They say we need to find the probability of civil or partial automation. I've already defined them there, COP. If I look at the joint probability of C or B, then the joint probability is equals to zero, right? The joint probability will be equals to zero. So it means they are mutually exclusive. If there was an event there with a number, they wouldn't be mutually exclusive. So because of that joint probability of zero, you can then write your equation as the probability of C plus the probability of P. You could have just used this. It will still be the same. because this is zero. So you can either use that or you can just say you would use the formula for mutually exclusive events. 
how do we calculate the probability of C? You take the total divided by the sample space, which is 31 divided by 3100, plus the probability of partial, which is 198 divided by 3100. Remember that? Simple basic probabilities. Simple event, outcome satisfying that simple event, divide by the sample space, and our sample space is 3,100. And remember also that your symbol, it's also marginal, which means it's joint events. The summation of your joint events. And what is the answer? Zero point zero seven. Zero point zero seven. Happy? If you yeah. are lost, speak now. So it means you need to be able to know and pick up from the statement that you are given. What is it, the facts that are given to you? And be able to identify which formula to use. Because if you read this sentence, you need to know that you are looking at probabilities and you also need to understand which formula you need to be using. Are they asking you given? Or are they asking you about independence? Or are they asking you about um, joint events or simple events. And here, with the O, I was able to identify that, yeah, we're talking about the addition rule. Because it say either the statement that say either one or, one or the other. And let's see if you can identify the next one. Once again, Consider the contingency table for the level of automation for autonomous vehicles and their users. Calculate the probability that the level of autonomy for the autonomous vehicle is conditional automation given that the vehicle is used as a rail hail. Choose the correct option from the list below. What are the keywords from this? Given. Given. You have given, you have conditional, and you also have rate. How do you write that statement? It will say no, no, no. the probability. So con conditional, maybe I should use CA and rate. RH. Right. So we're going to say CA given RH. Now, you need to think about the basic probability. Somebody uh, is talking or has something speaking in the background. Thank you. Uh, think about the conditional probabilities. So if I have event A and B and I say I need to find the probability that A is happening given that B already happened, which is the conditional probability, and we know that that is given by the joint event of A and B divided by the probability of a given event. Now, think about that as your formula for conditional probabilities. Right? Write your conditional probability for this. And then I'm going to write it out for you and see if you wrote it right. So the question says, find the probability that conditional autonomy given that the vehicle is raid. Given that the vehicle used is a raid hail. Find the probability that A 
given that it's B. It's B. So let's see if we can write it in terms of in relation to the basic probability equation. So it means we need to find the probability for joint events B A and R H over the probability of R H. Now, think about it in this way. Because here they didn't give you the probabilities, but they gave you event. Though you're still going to use observation satisfying the joint event divided by observation satisfying the simple event, the same way, to find the probability. So for the first one, we need to go and find the probability of CA, which is conditional automation and rail hail, which is 179. So we're going to say 179 divided by 3,100 divided by, because it is a, the joint probability. So the probability of A and B is given by observation satisfying divided by N. The probability of B is given by observation satisfying the event divided by N. We're going to apply the same concept. For RH, observation satisfying RH is a simple event. So we're going to take 868 divided by 3,100, which you can write it as 179 divided by 8. 6, 8, that's 3,000 in mathematical format. Do that. It will be 3100 0, 0, multiplied by, we change the division to a multiplication, and we flip 3100 0, 0, divided by 868, eight, which is, that cancels out. You are left with 179 divided by 868. What is the answer? The answer is B, Lizzie. The answer is 0, 0,21. That's correct. And that's how you will find the answer. Is that difficult? Not difficult, but confusing. Not difficult, yes, it is. So you need to always think about the original formula that you learned with, the basic concept that we give you or that they give you in the study guide. Use that to apply to the question that you have. That always works because then you do things in, in relation to the other so that you can understand step by step how to substitute the values into the formula. Okay. And, and if they didn't give you the events, they would have given you the probabilities. You don't have to do the steps because with the probabilities, you just substitute into the formula. So if they would have given you already what the probability of A and B is here yeah, in terms of um, the values, you just substitute that event or that probability into the formula and then do the calculation, which saves lives instead of events. Events, you need to first calculate the probabilities so that you can find the probability that you are looking for. Okay, moving on to question 10. The following discrete probability distribution shows the number of self-driving cars and the probability of spotting them in Michigan during traffic, peak traffic hours. Calculate the expected number of self-driving cars that can be spotted during the peak tra traffic. 
choose the correct answer. Already they're telling you that this is discrete probability distribution. So this is your X and this is the probability corresponding to that. So with that in mind, you go to the discrete section of your study unit, which is study unit five. You will look for the formula to calculate the expected value. Which is the expected value is the sum of your X observation times its corresponding probabilities. So it means you're going to multiply your x times your px, and you're going to add them together. That's all what they say. So it's zero times zero point five two plus one times zero point one nine. Plus two times zero point one seven plus three that in the bracket three times zero point zero nine plus four times zero point zero zero three. Or you can just go and say 0 times 0 0.5 is 0. 1 times 0 0.019 is 0 0.19. And 2 times 0 0.34 is 0. 0.17 is 0 0.34. And 3 times 3 times 0 0.09. Oh, it kills me. It's 0 0.27. And four times, four times 0 0.3 is 0 0.12, which is the same, 0, 0 0.019, 0 0.34, 0 0.27, Plus 0 0.12 and I might have gotten one wrong. Let's see. 0 0.17 times times two. Oh, I'm right. What is the answer? 0 0.92. The answer is E. You can add them there. No, I think the last one is wrong, Lizzie. The last you, one is yeah. Four times is zero point three zero three. I think four, it's four times zero point zero three is zero point one two. Yes. Because that number will be four is correct. Number four is correct. Yeah, 0 0.12, that's what I also get. So the answer is E. Double check. So 0 times 0, 0 0.52 will be 0. 1 times 0, 0.19 will be 0, 0.19. 2 times 0 0.17. 7 times 7 is 4. Amazon. Check that one. So zero zero. So this one is the same as zero point seven, which will be fourteen thirty four zero point three four. This is zero point nine plus zero point nine plus zero point nine, which nine plus nine plus nine is twenty seven. So zero point two seven and three is three six. Three six nine twelve zero point one two. So they are correct. I didn't. I didn't even have to use a calculator to calculate them, because the values are so small. Are we good? Are we good? Old? Are we happy? 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 Happiness. Okay. If we are good. Thank you.
Question 11. Question 11 states as follows. Consider a binomial experiment with nine trials and a probability of success of 0, 0,9. Use the binomial formula to determine the probability of exactly one success. Choose the correct answer from the list. So it says we need to use the formula. So the formula is N C R times. Maybe I should put there the probability of X is N C R times the probability of. So you will go to the binomial because they also tell you that. So in the in study unit five, you look for binomial. You look at the formula that they use for the binomial. You write it down. 1 minus the probability of n minus x. So since we know the formula, let's go identify the things that we require to add into here. So it says the number of trials, which is your n, the probability of success, which is your pi. And they say we must use the formula to find exactly one. So it means our probability of x equals to 1. So it means where x, we see x on the formula, we need to put 1. So r, I'm going to change r here to x because we use using x. So our n is 9, 1. Pi is 0 0.09 to the power of 1 times 1 minus 0 0.09 n is 9 minus x is 1. You need to do this step by step so that we are able to see what is it that we need to answer here. Right? So let's go to the, the next step is to calculate this. So calculate ncr. Calculate. 9, shift to second function, and look for NCR, and then press the 1, 1, and then press equal, press equal. So this is for the Casio, and this is for the shark. So let's see, what is the answer for N, for 9 NCR1? The answer here will be nine combination one is nine. 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 Multiply by zero point one uh, zero point zero nine to the power of one is the same as zero point zero nine. And the next one, one minus zero point zero nine. It's zero point nine one to the power of 9 minus 1 is 8. Now let's look at the options. Okay. So looking at this option, that cannot be almost. It almost looks like it. Okay. So this one looks like it, but it has some numbers. So the next step, let's calculate the ones without the powers together and see if it gets us somewhere. So we can just ignore this one for now. So 9 times 0 0.09, what do you get? 0 0.81. 0 0.81, and I'm going to leave the second part, which is multiply by 0 0.91 to the power of 8. Let's see if we can find it on the answers. Can we, it is option C. Option C. The moral of the story is <laughs> I don't know. Try and work it out in many ways, do different scenarios. And I think because we've seen with 
some of the assignment they do like asking questions like this and so it means see if you are able to identify the formula you know how to work it out and not solve the whole thing because the 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 challenge is because we all have cash your calculators we might be quick to put in onto the calculator and try and answer the whole question at once based on the formula but that is not what they want you to do in terms of this they just want you to apply logic in terms of how you solve questions step by step so do that look at the options and look at what you need to be doing and let it let the option guide you in terms of the answers especially when it comes to this type of complex calculations <clears throat> okay happiness are we good um uh, remember also this formula that i am using sometimes uh instead of using the ncx uh, you can use the combination formula which it will be your n factorial divided by your x factorial times n minus x factorial something like that so please do Moving on to question 12, which is second last question that we have. Recent reports of self-driving car crashes have resulted in safety concerns and consequently a delay in their rollout. Suppose the number of crashes is poison distributed with the mean rate of 0 0.1 crashes per year. What is the probability of having one self-driving car crash in a given year? So we need to look at poison go to the poison section of study unit five and look for the formulas for poison or oh, you're going to use the table because here they didn't say anything about formulas but we can use both so the first thing we do is if you're going to use the table let's identify what the mean rate is which is your lambda our lambda is 0 0.1 and we need to go to the question it says we need to find the probability of only one so x is equals to one car crash per year so we have a choice of either using the formula because it's easy e to the power of negative lambda times lambda to the power of x divided by x factorial. You can use this formula or you can use the table. On the table, you need to go find your lambda of 0, 0,1 and you need to go find x of 1 on the poison, on the poison table. So it means on the table, you will find your lambda there and you will find your x values there and where they meet that is your probability using the formula e to the power of negative 0 0.1 times i'm gonna put it into bracket times 0 0.1 to the power of x is one divided by one Victoria. And I use my calculator and can double check. 
those who are going to the table, remember to go in group four, poison table. The poison table is broken down into different poisons. So you're looking for 0 0.1, which is that value, and we're looking for X. So the answer is 0 0.0905. Easy, right? Because it's on that the poison probability table. 0 0.1. And the answer is 0 0.09. Found that? Let's use the calculator. On the calculator, I'm going to take back to maths. Our E on your Casio or on your sharp, you will need to find, find that. So I'm going to put there second function E O. Let me use my fraction. No, 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 no. Fraction second oh, shift E and I put the negative. 0 0.1. Use my arrow to come down. Multiply by. 0.1 to the power of 1 is the same as 0.1 divided by 1 factorial will still stay 1 factorial. Where is my factorial? And equal 0 0.0905, which is 48, which is 5. Then the answer is option E same way as on the table, I did find it as option, option B, 0 0.0905. You can use the table or you can use the formula. The only way to save time is to use the table. Imagine if they would have said at least, then it means you'll have to add as many values if they say at most, you will have to add one and zero to get to the answer. At most one, you add zero and one. If you have to calculate using the formula, so it means you'll have to calculate for X is equals to zero, and you have to calculate for X is equals to one, and then add the values together. Using the table, you just go to the table, you find the probabilities, you add them together. And that gives you your answer. So it's easy to use the table. Okay, looking at our last question. 20 minutes to spare. Let's see. Suppose Tesla conducted their own research and found the mean number of self-driving car crashes to be 0 0.14 car per year. What is the variance? of the number of self-driving cars. So now that's the time you go to your notes and you look at what is the mean, what is the average, is your expected mean or expected value, which is also called the mean, which is also called the variant. So if they ask you a question like this, what is your answer? Some of these things are like free, uh, free, free marks that they give you. You just need to know these things in order for you to get the question answered. And that is how. It's one way of answering some of the questions in the exam. Remember, save time. The minute you find the answer, move on. Right? Move on to the next question. We took, um, I'll say we started at half past three. We took an hour to answer 
uh, if I'm, let, let's put it that way. We took an hour to answer the questions because most of them, I will say an hour, even though we took one hour, 10 minutes or 20 minutes um, to answer only session one questions, if they are session one questions. If you are alone, then it means you can answer them in 30 minutes, right? You will, because you don't have to do all the things that we have done, looking at all the options, validating each and every statement that taking long or asking and going there and there and there and there. So you can answer your first session within 30 minutes. Remember, if it's two hour exam, make sure that you make sure that you put an hour for session one and hour for session two. <clears throat> and you pace yourself with you don't want to get to a point where the session ends, your hour ends for your session one without you getting to question 30. You need to make sure that you get to question 30 to stand the chance because regardless of how much you get in your session one, your well, no, not regardless. Remember, this is supplementary. Your year mark doesn't count. Whatever you get in your in your um, supplementary exam, that will be the mark you will get at the end as your final mark. So if your session one, you you get 100% of it, session two, you get 100% of it, you will get 100%, depending on how the, cal the calculations work, right? So pace yourself, make sure that you complete both sessions, one hour each. Session one is the easiest because it covers study unit one up until study unit five. The majority of the things, if you practice well and you know the formulas, you should not go anywhere or anyhow wrong with answering the questions. The only tricky part comes with study unit five and study unit four. Study unit four, you need to make sure that you know the formulas and you know how to use the formulas to create new formulas based on the question asked. Like, for example, with these questions, what is it that they have given you? Are they asking you to calculate the probability of or, or are they asking you to calculate the probability of and? You need to know how to define what is mutually exclusive how do you define independent statements? Because also probably in terms of the conditional probabilities as well, you need to know how to write the conditional statement based on the information given from the formulas that you know. But if two events are independent, what then does it say about conditional probabilities? You need to know those things. And it's easy to get it wrong because you always rely on what you know at that point. But if you can master each section with what is required to answer this section, what are the formulas that I need to keep in mind, especially if you have the formulas with you because it's an open book for you to be able to know which formula to use, take that summary note and use that as a guide like, because on there it gives you the formulas and it tells you which study unit is that and it, you should be able to use that to answer the question um study unit five where it has three things discrete remember the table if they didn't give you the probability they would have given new outcomes you can calculate the probabilities but it's in the exam so they will not trick you that. They will give you X and, and its corresponding probabilities. Not only that they can ask you to calculate the expected number. Remember, they can also ask you to calculate the probability and based on at least, at most, equal, exactly, less than, greater than, you need to know how to get the probabilities based on that. That is for the discrete probabilities. As you can see that there is only one question in discrete. And then there is the binomial, 
also with binomial, they can ask you to calculate the probabilities or they can ask you to use the formula or they can ask you to find the expected mean, the standard deviation or the variance of a binomial. You need to know the formulas to calculate those. With Poisson as well, you can see that they ask you questions to calculate the probability or to calculate the mean, the expected mean, the variance or the standard deviation. Remember the standard deviation for a Poisson, it's the square root of your, your standard deviation is the square root of your lambda. That is for the poison. Once you have mastered all this and you have all the formulas, you should not go anyhow wrong with answering the question. Remember not to panic. Don't allow the um, stress of not getting the first few questions wrong if you um, to get into your head. If the first question you cannot answer, do picky picky mabelani and make sure that the next following question you got it, you get it right. And do not panic. Take your time. Don't panic. Don't rush. But be mindful of the time. So I don't know how else I can tell you how to prepare for this exam. Other than that, I'm going to stop recording. And then we can have a discussion outside of the recording. Unless if there is a question relating to the content.